O'Connor with Colorado State University Extension in Larimer County. And I'm Darren Davidson in Boulder County. Today we're here to talk to you about rain barrels and how to make your landscape a little more water efficient. So whether or not you decide to build your own rain barrel from scratch or buy a pre-made one, here are some components that you need. And in this case, we made our own rain barrel from just parts bought at local hardware stores. So as you can see, we have a heavy duty garbage can. One of the key things you need for your rain barrel is a sealable lid. You need to have an area for the input, water input, so this is where your downspout will spill. And you need to have something like a colander or a mesh screen to keep out leaves and twigs and that sort of thing. If you're concerned about mosquitoes, you can put a finer screen there to keep them out. You also need an outlet here for when the rain barrel fills up with rainwater. And then of course you need down at the bottom an outlet where you will attach some sort of spigot that you can then hook your hose up to and drain the water into your landscape. Finally, again, down at the bottom, you need to be able to raise the rain barrel up so that you have more pressure because this is a gravity fed system. Like Megan Trainer says, it's all about that base. So the same applies when you're installing a rain barrel. There are a couple of reasons you want to have a nice, sturdy, elevated base for your rain barrel. The first is, because this is a gravity-fed system, the higher your barrel is, the better pressure you'll have when you're draining the water out. This is especially true if you're attaching a drip system to your rain barrel. Secondly, if your base is raised a little bit, you'll have better access for attaching your spigot and the hose when you're going to turn it on and off. Now when you're building your base, you want to make sure that it's nice and level. And this is for safety reasons. So if you can, put a level out, make sure that that base is level, and then you can continue to build it up and place the rain barrel. So once you've created your secure base, there's a couple things you need to think about when you're placing your rain barrel. So one is how you're going to orient it for the way you're going to water. So keep in mind where the spigot is going to be at the bottom and also most importantly where the overflow is going to be because that needs to run away from the house because a wet foundation is never a good idea. The other thing to keep in mind is that when this barrel is full, it can weigh several hundred pounds. And so if you have kids or nosy beagles like I do, it's important that you're going to secure it. So we're actually going to strap it with a bungee to the house for extra security. Because you've elevated your rain barrel, there's a really good chance that you'll need to make some adjustments to your downspout. To do this, have your rain barrel in place, get different attachments such as these elbows and measure so that when you attach the elbows, the bottom of the downspout is approximately one to two inches above the inlet on your rain barrel. Here we have a fully installed complete rain barrel. An important thing to remember is that you want the bottom of the downspout to be one to two inches above the inlet. And one of the last things we need to do is attach a hose to the overflow and make sure that it runs away from the landscape. Now with the spigot, you can either have a hose that runs into the garden or you can just use the spigot to fill any sort of watering can. But you know, really, you know what the last thing we need is, Darren? What, Allison? We need some rain! Oh. 